Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Christy. I'm a homeschool mom to three kids and today we're gonna to be doing a Q&A. I think this is the first Q&A video I've ever done on my channel um, and I'm excited about it. So you guys sent in some really, really great questions so I'm gonna to try to answer all of them in this video. The first question I got was, what is your favorite subject to teach and why? So I think a shorter answer to this question would be my least favorite subject would be math. I pretty much love everything else. I enjoy everything else teaching to my kids. Math has always been something I struggle with, so I'm not as confident in teaching it, and I think that that's why I don't enjoy it so much. I would say my main ones that I love teaching so much would be uh, science because we're doing a lot of biology sciences right now and I always find that stuff really super fascinating I love nature so like nature studies kind of go along with science and I love learning new things about nature and seeing kind of the miraculous creation of nature and how God made a purpose for everything in our world and it's just like amazing the more I learn about it. I also really enjoy geography and culture studies just because I really enjoy learning about other cultures and other places that people live and literature because I love to read and my kids really enjoy reading and it's always just a really nice enjoyable bonding time when we're doing any type of like read aloud or book study. My next question is what's your favorite part of the homeschool day? I would say to be honest I really love the beginning of our homeschool day and just kind of like waking up getting my coffee, going through all of the lesson plans to see what we're doing for that day, setting things up, gathering supplies. And usually my son kind of is either with me doing that or he kind of rolls out of bed shortly into me doing that. And so we'll usually sit down and do his school and it's just like a really enjoyable, peaceful moment. I also really enjoy any time that we're doing anything as a group. It's like my favorite thing. I really love that one room schoolhouse vibe that we get when we're all collaborating together and we're all at the table doing the same thing. My next question is, what do you find the most challenging this year having all three doing school? So if you don't know, we added in my three-year-old very loosely into our homeschool routine this year because she requested her own school time. And so it has been a little bit of an adjustment. I think that anytime you add in another child, it is an adjustment because your routine is a little bit different. I'm only one person and there's three of them. So spreading myself you know, between all three of them can sometimes be a little chaotic, can sometimes be a little stressful, but we're hanging in there. We're getting it. We're adjusting. We're flowing. We've kind of come up with a pretty good routine for the most part. Obviously, kids always throw you for a loop, so routine, I use that very loosely. So far, it's not super challenging because Isla's only three, and I'm not super stressed on making sure that she does her school every single day. So if she's just not in the right mood, which with her, you never know. <laughs> um, she may not be in the mood for school, and so we just won't do anything that day. I'm also only doing school with her three days-ish a week, usually, typically, and so that helps as well with the ending part. I always have included her kind of alongside us for group things, and so that's not any different. But I would say the most challenging thing is just spreading myself and my attention. Sometimes they all want my attention at the same time. Sometimes they argue about who gets to do their independent studies with mom first, so I guess that would probably be my biggest struggle right now. How often do you get to go on dates with my husband? Okay, so we actually don't go, I mean, we don't go on dates very often. We have seasons of going on more dates than others. We don't really plan those out. It's just kind of if we have extra money that week and we can find a babysitter, we may go out. Um, we do a lot of date nights at home and so we'll put the kids to bed and we will watch a movie together or just like talk or have some quality time that way. Um, so that's typically what we do but when we do get to go on a date we really enjoy going to dinner and just talking and you know spending that quality time because it is very important making sure to give attention to your relationship with your spouse is very important. What do you find most enjoyable about homeschool? This is a very big question. Um, there's a lot of things I find enjoyable about homeschool. And I think 
the biggest thing is probably just spending that time with my kids. That time is so valuable and they grow so fast. So I have really, really valued that time that I get back with my children by homeschooling. So I really enjoy spending the time with them. I love seeing kind of their little breakthroughs when they learn something new and how proud they are of themselves. I love seeing like that progress kind of shine through. And I also really enjoy seeing kind of their relationships like their sibling relationships really grow and what they teach each other is really cool too. Okay, the next question I got was, does your husband help teaching or with the teaching or learning? Um, so I'm assuming, does he teach anything in the homeschool? And um, he does not. <laughs> um, he is very hands-off with the homeschooling. I'm the one doing all of the homeschooling typically. However, he does impart in them a lot of valuable life skills, especially with my son. My son and him, like he'll take him on little jobs he has to do because he does a lot of side work. And my son learns a lot of like hands-on work skills with him and I really love that. So he, he does impart in them a lot of life skills without really realizing it probably. Um, but as far as like sitting down with the curriculum, no, he doesn't do any of the teaching. Okay. The next question I got is how many books did you choose in each unit of playing preschool? Um, so with playing preschool, that's the preschool curriculum that I used for two years. And typically I would average about three to four books per unit. I would try to purchase them if I could find them like on thrift books or something or at the library if I could find them. But I really did try to get every book on the list if I could. Um, obviously there were times where I couldn't find a book or I didn't have money in the budget to purchase new books or maybe I just had some books that are very similar on hand. And so I would just substitute in books that fit the theme. But we were reading the book every day that it told you to read a different book. We were reading different books. I would just use ones that we had. We have a pretty good home library and so I was able to pull a lot of books from our own collection to fit in with those themes. Um, we read a lot of books and I would look, like search out other books that weren't on the list that go with the theme too to add an extra because we did a lot of reading. We really enjoyed that. Um, but if you can't find the books or you don't have the budget to purchase all of them, it's totally fine if you use something else. It's You don't need to stress about it. It's totally fine if you read the same book again. That's fine too. Um, you make the program fit your needs. The next question I got is, will you use playing preschool again? Yes, I am planning on using playing preschool with my next child when she's closer to four. I think that that is a good age to start playing preschool because yes, it is play-based, but there's so much information in there that they pick up so easily if they are ready. And I think that she'll be more ready for those concepts when she's around four. The next question I got is, which is your favorite, purely preschool or playing preschool? So if you guys have followed me for a while, you know that we've used both. Um, I've kind of switched them in and out a little bit with my son, but we are focused on purely preschool right now with my youngest. And I love both of these programs so much. I don't have a favorite over the, the other because I find that they're very different. So purely preschool is a very gentle approach. It's, it's I would say for a younger preschool, like that two to three age range, perfect for them because it's so gentle, it's simple, and it's not really designed to teach them their letters and sounds per se. There is a little bit of letter work in there, but it's not like a prime focus in the curriculum. The focus of the curriculum is more so on just learning naturally and organically and spending that quality time. There's little simple crafts and reading books together, and there's a really big focus on life skills, which I really, really love. So. Purely preschool is what we're using now because it's perfect for the age that Isla is at this time. Playing preschool is a full on, like you're gonna, they're gonna learn all their letters and numbers by the end of it. It's very focused on that. It, it is play-based, so it's still a gentle learning process, but it is more, I don't wanna say like meaty, but it, it is definitely a program that is designed to really start teaching them like alphabet and numbers and counting and number sense and like all sorts of things. So 
I would say purely preschool is a little bit less advanced per se than playing preschool, but I love them both so much for entirely different reasons. So I can't really compare them because they're very different. So I love both of them. The next question I got is how do you push past the I don't want to's? Oh boy, this is a big thing in our school, especially with one of my children. And I think that it's very tricky to just give you a straight answer. I do have a video on my channel, I'll try to remember to link it, that's about teaching a reluctant learner. And a lot of the things in there are what I use with this child when they are being reluctant and they don't want to do their schoolwork. It's a battle. I have a child that doesn't love school. She would rather be doing her own thing and I get that, but at the same time, these are things that they need to do. So my kids, they know that we don't do screens before school. That's a big one. Um, they know that they need to get their schoolwork done before they can do the screen time. And I do try to give them breaks in between subjects if possible because I know that that helps. I just try to partner with them and try to understand that they don't particularly want to do something, but it is something that they need to do. And it's kind of as simple as that. Like I don't really take a no for an answer, but for the most part, like it's not optional and they have to do it if they want their screens or their free time. But again, I will link that how to teach a reluctant learner video because I have a lot more kind of tips in there that may help you. The next question I got is, have you heard of or considered Fix-It Grammar? I have heard of Fix-It Grammar. I think um, it's a very popular program. I think a lot of people use it. Have I considered using it ourselves? Not right now. Um, I have looked into it, but I just don't feel like it's the right fit for our style at this time. I'm not saying I'll never use it, but for right now, it's just not really gonna fit in with what we're doing. Another question I got is, are you still using Slow Down? If so, are you enjoying it? So Slow Down is by A Year of Learning, and I did a video on it, I will try to link it for you, um, where I kind of gave you a broad overview of the program, and yes, we are using it. And the way that we are using it is kind of like on Fridays, it's like our nature study, if that makes sense. So if you saw on Instagram my reel with the water cycle that fit set up that I had, that was with Slowdown. So Slowdown is a really beautiful program because it has this gorgeous book that talks about um, small moments in nature and noticing the little things, which I love. And it's very beautiful and whimsical. It has information about things. And then I will get books that are in the curriculum that go along with the theme and we'll read more about it that way. Um, there's some hands-on activities and different like experiments you can do. There's a whole bunch of different things in there that you can do. And then I will also try to find my own activities, kind of add it in and make it like this little unit study. Um, and we really, really like it. I think it's a gorgeous curriculum. I love how it's laid out. And yeah, so we're using it as nature study and really enjoying it. Another question I got, and this is a really good question. Switching curriculums seems expensive, especially when it's not an online curriculum. Without prying too much, how do you navigate the expense of it all? And I would say it definitely can be expensive switching curriculums, for sure. Um, for us, I try not to make a switch in curriculum unless it's absolutely necessary. So if a curriculum is just impossible to make work for us, that is when I will search out other resources. Also, if I notice that there is something missing from the curriculum we're using, sometimes I will find like a supplement somewhere to add in to fill that void. Um, but replacing an entire curriculum, I don't usually do unless I actually have to. I try to kind of change the current curriculum to kind of make it work for my children and usually I can do that by leaving something out or by adding something in. That being said, I do feel like changing curriculum is a part of navigating your homeschool journey, especially in the beginning, I feel like, when you're not really sure what you like yet. You're not really sure of the way that your children learn yet. Um, I think that those first few years, at least in my experience, switching curriculum is kind of a normal thing. It's a little bit of a trial and error. Um, 
I also try to keep in mind like our budget, our personal budget, what things we can spend money on and what we can't. There are a lot of curriculums out there that I would love to use, but they're just not affordable for us. And the price point is just too high. And so I don't use them. Um, I find something else that's more affordable. When I do need to switch a curriculum, I do a ton of research. I'm a natural researcher. I research, research, research. So I will research the heck out of all curriculums before I make a purchase. I also try to spread out the cost when I can. So for example, if we're doing a literature guide um, or like we're doing Brave Writer arrows, I'm buying one arrow at a time. I'm not buying all the arrows for the entire year in one go. We purchase an arrow, we do the arrow, I purchase the next one, and that helps kind of spread off the cost like over time. Um, also, we do a lot of literature learning where I need different books for different studies. And so what I try to do is one, buy secondhand if I can first. So I'll go on thrift books and look for those books. Um, I utilize my library when I can if it's a short term that we need the book for. And then the other thing I do is I buy a little bit of books at a time. I'll make a couple different orders throughout the year as we need more books. And while that doesn't change the cost, it does make it more doable for us in the long run just because the cost is spread out and it's not like a giant lump sum right in the beginning. Also something that we started doing is we have a separate bank account that we use for homeschool expenses and we have a certain amount of money put into that bank account every week. It does add up every week and then there's some money when I need to buy something like a curriculum or a resource or supplies or something throughout the year, I have that little tiny nest egg to use for that. And the last question I got is what kinds of field trips do we have planned this year? And right now I'm kind of in the process of thinking about that. I haven't really solidified any, you know, planned any field trips for sure. I'm kind of not a planner. I just kind of am like, oh, if I see something advertised at our like local museum or something like a traveling exhibit, oh, that would be really fun. Let's go do that. I'm kind of that way. Um, I did talk to my kids on the first day of school. If you saw our first day of school vlog, I talked to them about what kinds of field trips that they wanted to do this year. Um, they all want to do the apple orchard, which is kind of a given. Um, and then we may do like the planetarium sometime this year because we are going to be doing an astronomy unit later this year. We have a museum that's close to us. And so we are probably going to utilize that a lot because they have some brand new exhibits in the museum and then they always have kind of traveling um, exhibits come through. So like earlier this spring they had a Hot Wheels exhibit which was really cool and then I think they're going to have a dinosaur one in the next couple of weeks which would be really cool. So we are, I'm always keeping eyes out for those kinds of exhibits and those kinds of events to go to. Another place we really like to go to is a nature preserve that's near us. They have a ton of land and a ton of different like activities always going on. Um, I always get like pop-ups on like the Facebook group and stuff of different things that they have for kids. And it's actually where we went for our maple syrup tour earlier this year. They always have these really fun events, so I'll probably be taking them there a lot. Um, yeah, so I don't really have set like field trips in mind just as something piques my interest or something pops in my head that would be a good idea for something we're studying, we'll do it. So those are all the questions I got. Thank you so much for sending in all of your questions. They were all really, really good questions. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in another video very soon. Bye.